how do you kind of moderate those video call discussions? Uh, one is I think it's important to use a tool where you can see everybody in the meeting at once. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of tools where you can just see like a few icons at the bottom and then the, per the person who's speaking, it's big. I really prefer systems uh, like in Zoom where you can see the gallery view, see everybody at once. And I think that can help because you can see when somebody wants to speak then, you know, like you can see that they're taking a breath or they're raising their hand like old old fashioned and back from back in school. It seems to be universal, like everybody in the world understands I want to speak or, you know, you can hold up a card saying, I'd like to speak. I have a point to make. Um, but I would say that's also a um, there's some facilitation techniques for doing that. One is when you ask a question into the group, it's good to actually call on somebody to answer it. It's also OK for them to pass. Right. Like it shouldn't you're, you're not putting somebody on the spot so they can say, like, oh, I'm not ready yet. Pass, pass the next person. But I would say instead of asking a question into the full group, you may want to direct it at a specific person. Um, so being able to see everybody, facilitating just directing at a certain person. But the thing is, is that even when we're together in person, you're going to get people talking over each other. And with video, I think it really just needs to either be facilitated well by somebody, or you have to establish etiquettes like, hey, you're going to, if we ask a question, raise your hand and go. So, you know, that is the downside of video calls is that they're, the, the conversation isn't as fluid in that respect, because you can't talk over each other, whereas you can do that in person. But I would also say, you know, it, it has its upsides, which is in person, usually it's the loudest person or the one that just doesn't stop that gets their voice heard. And so you can equalize that a little bit more on video uh, and have to have facilitators call on people or raising your hands like I want to speak next, using the chat to make your point instead of talking over somebody. Um, so those are all techniques. but. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's it's not the simplest thing. Something that other people, other facilitators have done, or even if you're worried about it as a talker, I sometimes will make a list of everybody. I have a piece of paper and I have a list of everybody that's there and I will mark when somebody has spoken. So I'll put on a piece of paper like, okay, they spoke, they spoke, they spoke. And then I can kind of visually see who's not speaking. And I might be able to say like, ah, okay, Sean, I haven't heard from you yet. Do you have something that you want to say on this? So I would say if you're really worried about it, first of all, if you're worried about it, it's you're probably not talking too much because you have a level of self-awareness there. You're questioning it to begin with. So there's a there's some self-awareness there. But for the others, I would just use a simple technique of just marking when others are speaking and then and asking for feedback. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog, the URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link, which is found in the description of this video.